I love my life. As you can see, I have no arms and no legs. And it's not like one day I went to school and then kids teased me and told me that I had no arms, no legs. I knew I had no arms and legs, but I didn't think it was such a big deal until the world told me that I was an alien, that I was ugly, that I wasn't good enough. And when the doctors saw me for the first time, they apologized to my parents that they did not pick it up in the ultrasounds and give them an option to abort me. They were absolutely convinced that I'd never have a quality of life. I didn't want to be special. I just wanted to be valued. I wanted to know that I wasn't a mistake. I wanted to know that in Jeremiah 29, 11, how God says he has a plan, hope, and future. I wanted that assurance that he didn't forget me. Many of us secretly struggle. I know I did. When I was eight years old, I went into a very dark place. A depression that lasted five years. And that depression peaked during an attempted suicide of me trying to swallow water and then inhale water to drown myself in the bathtub of my own home. I convinced myself there was no hope. I convinced myself that there was no God, but if there was a God, he was simply unfair. I prayed for a miracle, and a miracle did not come. At age 13, something interesting happened. I hurt my little foot. My foot allows me to walk. And all of a sudden, I'm a limbless man who used to walk, who now can't. And I realized I gotta be thankful for what I have instead of being angry for what I don't have. But I realized pretty quickly that God held me. Even when I hated him, screamed at him, and refused to talk to him, he loved me. At age 15, I read John chapter nine, a man was born blind, and no one knew why he was born that way. But Jesus said it was done so that the works of God would be revealed through him. And I realized, if God has a plan for a blind man, God's got a plan for me. It was the janitor at my high school who saw me speak in front of my school peers as the vice president. Little did I know that I would be approached by the person cleaning the toilets at my school and looking me straight in the eyes and saying, I heard you talk. I said, oh, cool. He said, it was better than cool. You're gonna be a worldwide speaker. And I said, excuse me? <laughs> he said, you're gonna go around the world and speak. And I said, no way, you're crazy. What am I gonna talk about? Your story. I'm like, I don't have a story. He said, yes, you do. We had an arm wrestle about it. And a couple months later, he organized my first speech. And during that first speech, people were crying, thinking, what's going on? But little did I know that God could use me to talk about something I thought I never had, hope. I could very well be someone that maybe one day shares my story with more people. And maybe when I don't get a miracle, I can still be one. Well, I'll tell you right now, I have a pair of shoes in my closet in case God gives me arms and legs. But I've realized two things. Number one, the greatest miracle of all that I'll ever receive in my life is my soul being saved, me being filled with the Holy Spirit, having a relationship with Jesus where I abide in Him and He abides in me, Him being my comfort, my strength, give me guidance and wisdom throughout my life. Anything more than my salvation is just a bonus. Well, he gave me a couple more bonuses. A wife, a beautiful wife. She's amazing. Four kids, beautiful kids. They're amazing. God 
has rescued me and blessed me. But the second thing I've realized miraculously, he delights in using the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. And I never imagined that God would take me to 78 countries, 3,500 speeches, 9.7 million people face to face, 1.2 million people gave their life to Jesus Christ, largest crowd, 800,000 people, 10 different governments I was able to address, and I've been on television to 2.8 billion people. People see me without arms and legs, but I don't represent limbless people. I represent healed, broken-hearted people. To let the broken-hearted know that you can be healed and you can be a miracle too. You know, I tell people, if God can use a man without arms and legs to be his hands and feet, then God can use any willing heart. We don't dream big enough. We look at our circumstances. We're not here to survive, we're here to thrive. And we're not here just to be saved and be blessed. You've been called according to his purposes. Maybe you've been sexually abused. Maybe you've had an abortion. Maybe you were fatherless. Maybe your husband has died. Maybe your wife has left you. Whatever your brokenness is, know that God has not left you. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. When you call upon Him, He's there. He loves you and you're not alone. Do not ever underestimate what God can do with your broken pieces. He could do something beautiful with you too. If you trust Him, obey, hunger and thirst after His plan. Share your story with someone that you love. You can tell them all about how Jesus set you free and how you know Him and He knows you. And it's changed everything for you. The whole I am second thread is amazing. God is number one. So act like it, live like it, and remember when you're saved and blessed to help someone else in need. Thank you so much for watching this I am second film. It's our hope that these stories bring encouragement and inspiration for you. Perhaps you're asking yourself right now, what's next for me? Well, here's a suggestion. Go to the I Am Second website and tap on the Live Second section. There you're going to find next steps to help you on your faith journey. Whether you're new to the concept of faith and walking with God, or you've been walking with Jesus for years, I'm going to tell you right now, there is always a next step for everyone because we need to grow in faith. And if we don't grow in faith, we shrink in faith. Well, we're here to help you. And on the website, we want to help you grow in that journey with Jesus Christ. There's films, blogs, tools, and training. We want to help you to reach all that God has for you and to actually convert from just viewing these things to actually doing these things in the name of Jesus. We know that God has more for you and we are here to champion that journey together. So right now, go check it out, be inspired and be engaged in growing in your faith journey with Jesus today.